This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. And now I will call to order this meeting of the Eastman Planning Board for Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. Um, we are in person except for Danny Hartman, who is appearing with remotely. Danny, can you hear us okay? Awesome. All right, so first item on the agenda, public speak. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to something that is not on the agenda tonight? So nothing. All right, Eli, is Danny the only human being remote? Yes. Funded? Okay, excellent. Um, all right, next item is planning board minutes. So the first one's May 17th, 2022. No modifications, I'll show you. May 17th. I'll second this. All right, voting in favor of the May 17th meetings. Aye. Aye. I think, Danny, I have to do a roll call vote for you. So, Danny Hartman, how do you vote? Aye. Excellent. All right, uh, next up is minutes for June 7th, 2022. My only correction is I was not there, and I should be listed as absent. But other than that, I have nothing. I have nothing. So I would like the motion to approve the minutes from June 7th, 2022. I shall second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Danny? Aye. And I am going to abstain. Um, all right. Stalled as long as I could. But we will move on to public hearing for adhesive applications uh, per condition one of the special permit dated September 3rd, 2019, for the board to review plans to replace two regenerative thermal oxidizers with one new RTO unit and determine if the changes are significant enough to require modification of the special permit. Someone here from the applicant that would like to let us know what's going on. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. I thank the board for uh, making time for us tonight to present our plans for upgrading our thermal oxidizers at our plant. Um, we have two older RTOs, regenerative thermal oxidizers, that are operating there currently. Um, older technology, less efficient, um, and in the part of trying to save some money. Uh, we're trying to put some new equipment in that's more energy efficient, save on electric, save on gas, make it a little better for the environment. Um, this doesn't come as a, a significant cost, a pretty significant cost to put these units in, but the ownership of the company has chosen to go down this path um, to make it better for everyone. So I'll lead off by saying there will be no modifications or alterations at all to the building. These units are located behind the Arborvitae and a PVC fence. If you drove down the road, nobody would know they're there. Okay. The Arborvitae's are quite tall. So when we installed the units back in 2014, we had to put them over the top with a 600 ton frame. So if it wasn't for a 600 ton frame sitting in our parking lot, which in itself is insignificant, um, people would know. Nothing's going on, all right? So, um this crane everybody was stopping the last time we had it on the road it's just you could see it from all the way down by the mills it was that tall okay um, the reason we have a 600 ton crane is these pieces go in as monolithic bases and they're quite heavy and we need large equipment to move it in. Um, so the plan is we remove um, both the thermal oxides that are in place take them straight to a scrap yard and bring in that the new one stays and bring in the new one over top of the archivites. So um, part of the process is we have to go through the MADEP for approval of the process and the project, and they do a thorough, a, a thorough review of everything we have to do. So the DEP has the technical resource and administrative resources to handle all of this, including public feedback as part of their process. Um, one of your handouts um, 
that. Let me go back a little bit. This, what you're looking at is arbor vitis. Are the arbor vitis that the RTOs are behind? Okay, so you pretty much cannot see what's going on back there. The current units are looking like that. They're staged side by side. Um, the wall would be up to the top where you see the heading. Um, there's duct work that interconnects the each unit to the production lines within the building, and the duct work is um, connected to each one of our coders, so we can direct the flow of gases to each unit. That is a photo, a small photo of the size of the crane and one of the pieces of the unit get hoisted in 2014. So the it's a 12 tractor trailers to bring this crane into the site and put it together, right? So it's very significant. And the cost of this thing per day is astronomical. So when we're done with this project, this is what the yard is going to look like. We'll have one Titan 15 night by unit sitting there and replace the two. So there'll be a good portion of the yard now will be freed up. So the unit you see on the outboard side towards Barbara Vitae is another unit that the um, company has purchased years ago uh, to handle specific products that we have to uh, destroy in their waste stream. So that area will be cleared. The DEP process looks like this. We have project conception. We have a pre-application meeting, which we did back in April. We had a pre-application meeting with this division chief of the MADEP and coordinate yours on the writing our permit and writing our project up. Once um, we had that meeting, Ty and Bond was, uh, who represents us for environmental work, um, was preparing the application and they must submit the application to the DEP. When the application is submitted, they have 24 days to do administrative review of the application and um, make sure all the information we do we give is correct. On that, they have another 72 days to do a technical review. And there's a side path here where they have potential for additional technical review by the master EP. Um, that part of the project, they have a specific form term for it. Um, don't get scared to stay it up tight the term. Their, their exact terminology, if you see this pop up on their website, which I encourage everybody to go to the website, if more information is needed, it's called technical deficiency. So if you see a technical deficiency, um, don't get nervous. It just means that something in their application triggered them to ask for more information. Okay. So once we've gone through our technical review, then they'll issue a draft permit. On issuance of a draft permit, there'll be a 30-day public comment. So the public, if this whole process is online, the public can follow it, you can follow it, anybody can follow the process, and you can go in and watch the progress of it and make comments, see the other people's comments, see the re replies of the comments from the DEP to the various people. After all that is done, the third day period is up, and they could issue final permit, and then within 120 days after that, we have to do a staff performance test to make sure that the unit is performing to the level of destruction as specified in our permit. Okay, so that's you know an overview of the process. It's quite lengthy. Um, just to get to the bottom part, 129 days, and then um, so we want to get this going as quick as possible and uh, and move ahead with this project. Okay, part of their process and the public uh, commenting includes concerns of neighbors, adjacent visitors, city. If you would like to comment, um, we do not um, have to present any back that's available with control technology for this project because we already passed back with the other RTOs, and these are in kind equipment. So we do not have to do any more back work on that one. Um, I provided in one of the slides just a little later on the um, exact location where you can win and get your website and everything you can get. So um, 
We will interface with all our abutters. We're going to get a current abutter list because the last time we had the abutter list was a couple of years ago. There's, we assume there must be some changes in the neighborhood. So we will be downstairs to the tax station office and ask for a current abutters list. And then uh, we will interface with all the abutters, tell them what we're, what we're doing. Um, so we went through all that whole process. So on here, you'll see different websites and different people that you can contact um, to be notified at the start of the public comment period. Mark Simpson is the division chief. Courtney Danneker is the person who's doing our writing for our permits. They're both accessible via email. And if we need assistance translating permit stuff, um, Mark would be more than happy to go through and work with you and tell you what we're doing. So basically, we're not doing anything different than we do today. We're just taking out two pieces of inefficient equipment and putting in one very efficient piece of equipment. So the, uh, the, the positives are going to be the electrical requirements will be reduced, natural grass requirements will be reduced, and everybody knows we have a moratorium on gas right now, so this will be good for the gas company, good for everybody else, because it puts more gas back in the pipeline for other people to use. Um, the new unit is very energy efficient. The old units have six valves that are slow acting. The new units will have four valves that are fast acting. So they open, close instantaneously. Heat is maintained within the unit and it operates more efficiently. On top of that, we are putting in another chamber or a pump chamber to get any gas, any heat or gas that might um, come out from the process and not be homogenized properly, it'll capture it and run it back through the unit. And the final feature of this thing will have a button down feature. So previously when we shut these units down, we're proud, let, me, let me give you a quick over how they operate. An RTO fires up, you have to get it up to temperature, generally 1600 degrees. So to get it up to temperature, you have to fire natural gas in there to get these beds heated up. So they're, they're loaded with ceramic saddles and ceramic bricks. Takes a while to get them up to temperature. Once they're up to temperature, the VOCs coming from the process destroy everything that comes into it and it's self sustaining heat from there, as long as you have enough VOC load. If you don't have enough VOC load, then it has to supplement with a burner. So this new unit will get up to temperature quicker, hold the temperature longer, and this button down feature is as soon as you go into a weekend mode, you hit the button down, everything shuts off, shuts off, all the chambers are isolated. The heat is retained in the bed longer. So when we come back up after a shutdown, which currently we don't have any shutdowns, but we're running on a 24-7 operation, um, it'll come up to temperature a lot quicker. Um, other than that, this is our current processes that we run with the DEP. It's all in front of you. Um, we are within the environmental justice zone, barely within it, but we're within the one mile radius of the environmental justice. We catch barely a tip of it, but it's in there, so it will be part of the DEP program with the environmental justice um, to review all of that to make sure we're not doing anything to harm you know, people within the environmental justice zone. This is the website where you can go on and follow the, prog the progress of the draft permits and the application materials. So anybody and everybody will have access to this if you want and follow. I know some of our neighbors are versed in it and I'm sure they'll be following it and they're more than welcome to follow. We, have, we do everything we can to be good stewards for the environment and good stewards for our neighbors. So in the last two years, we have zero complaints from our neighbors with anything. Um, if you recall the last time we were here, we had the room packed. That we have heard nothing the last two years. Just for transparency, though, on Thursday of last week, Cam Metal had a problem with one of their ventilation fans. I happened to be working in the adhesive applications building. I heard the fan making a loud noise. I immediately went to Cam Metal, they shut the fan down, and we repeated the problem. Um, during that process, Janice Doppler did call the Cam Metal plant and make a complaint about the noise. Um, I am no longer the chem metal plant as I was the plant manager of chem metal. I'm no longer, I'm the vice president engineer for the whole corporation now. She called the plant looking for me, um, but she got on the phone with the current uh, 
plant manager, and he explained everything we're doing. Um, we have a company sending in repairing the fan, balancing the fan. We have a company making new stacks, something like that. And they will not run that until it's ready to go. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. Thank you. I have several questions. First, congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. I, I found that presentation very compelling uh, and good news with regard to the communication and the relations with the neighbor. Uh, in layman's terms, uh, how would you describe the function of a thermal oxidizer? What is it doing for you in your plant? Okay. Um, Not how it works, but what it does. We have all the organic compounds that are created within our facility part of our process from our soft latent adhesives. We cannot exhaust that into the environment without treating that. So it has to run through a unit to destroy it. And we have to destroy it to meet the EP specifications. So that's basically the operation. Um, there are opportunities um, to try to save heat from them, but at this point we do not have that capability. So this is getting rid of compounds, which would affect smell. Smell and a lot of the things there. We use various chemicals. We are a large quantity generator. We discussed last time, um, you know, all the chemicals we use, you know, everything we do. Um, and this is what we use to um, get rid of those volatile chemicals. What about sound? This sound will be a lot uh, less because one, only one, one band. Two, um, we have a silencer that we pay extra money for to put on this fan to silence it down. And three, the other units have two fans on and we're, we're minimizing it by one. Two more questions. One of them is, I think you described a 129-day process. If we started now, we're looking at something in line with the name of the company, October, could be with. Are, is that, are you looking to start now or is this going to roll in spring or when one might? We would like to start as soon as possible. Um, going in, going into winter, uh, it's not optimal to operate these units. It takes more gas. So going into winter, we'd like to start this process now. See if we can get the approvals going and try to get the equipment in before winter. But as everybody knows, um, the equipment deliveries today are astronomically long. So last question is about, uh, you made a comment about um, retrieving an updated uh, about our list and communicating with them. How would you communicate with them? What's that process? We will send letters to every abutter and send people a copy and Jeff the copy and they'll know that we sent it out, who we sent it out to. And um, we know that it's critical to contact them. As a matter of fact, the DEP encouraged us to contact them as well. All right, and I'm just gonna toss a follow up. Would you say that this new device will increase or decrease the sound from your thermal aspects? Decrease. Yeah. Harry, any questions? No. Danny, do you have any questions? No, mine were covered. Okay. Sorry if I had a doubt. No, that's <laughs> I'll just say like the tension here for me is that we're trying to decide whether this, not whether this is good or not, right? It seems on its face that it is. It's whether to do it without public input, which normally I wouldn't balk at. It's just that, as you mentioned, typically you have dozens of people in here whenever you guys are in front of us. And so, and we had a lot of time and public input went into the decision. So I'm admittedly nervous about that part, um, but it does seem on its face like this is going to improve all the things that people have complained about in the past. Um, and looks like it will be improved. But I don't get from the public. Is speaking the, looks like they address the public part yeah. of it. Um, that will be undertaken through the DEP process. That is why they have that robust public comment section in there. Um, and that will be in the letter we send to all the abutters that they can follow the process and so on like that. Um, have any abutters been informed about this process? Today. I know you weren't required to do that, no, but we have yeah. not notified any. To be honest with you, I have not had any interaction, and I had quite a bit of interaction with two, especially of the abutters throughout the whole project when we were putting the building up. And um, they were very vocal. At one point, somebody called up on us because we were hoisting something onto the roof, and um, we got a call from City Hall. What are we hoisting onto the roof? And had the roofing material at the time. And, 
but that's how astute they were for what we were doing. And we haven't heard anything from uh, our neighbors. Um, so, yeah, and I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that you've gone two years without any noise or, you know, there was some stuff, the mission and some smell and all those sort of complaints. I'm, I'm thrilled that, that there's been two years of, of none of that. So that's that's excellent. The only, the only uh, conversation I have with the neighbors is, remember the fence thing we had going where yep. we shortened the fence up, we had to plant all the trees, which we did all the plantings and everything. After we put the fence up and did all the plantings, one neighbor called up and said, listen, can you make that fence longer? Because they love the fence. There's no noise, there's no light, there's no anything going over there. So, you know, we're getting all positive feedback from the neighbors, no negative. Great. Did you extend the fence? Well, it took us <laughs> no. 22, it took us 22 months to get that little piece of the fence first in. Part in. Yeah. And there's the supply chain issues today, I think one for an hour about. I mean, we're, we're we have equipment that we're supposed to upgrade it back in December, that the parts still have the electronic parts still haven't arrived. Yeah. This is this is I've never seen anything. It looks like everyone here is from the applicant, but just to check if anybody else has anything to add or comments or questions from the public at large to the extent they're here. It's basically I wanted to add that the, the building can, is, can you come up to the microphone just so we can make okay. sure that everyone can hear, especially our remote <laughs> Just said introduce yourself. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm Mike Schaefer. Yeah. And the building is basically muffled a lot of the sound from the equipment. You know, we, we didn't know that going in and putting the building in. It's made quite a difference. Good to hear. I'm in. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Your comments really well spoken. This was a, a project we put a lot of attention to. There was a lot of public feedback sent, and I think your concern is right on to make sure that people are included. Ultimately, our goal, I think, uh, is to determine if this is a minor change or not, and if it's not, then something they should be brought into again, because that's the whole purpose of significant. And so, at the end of the day, while I feel it should be included, also have to make that judgment. I mind if it's minor or major, and I feel it's. Minor. That's fine. Are any questions, comments, uh, thoughts? The only concern I had was there's going to be noise here, that's all. It's not going to be quieter, so if they're going to, they're going to improve the situation, that makes it worse. So I think it's going to be a minor, minor. Okay, well, Danny, any other thoughts, comments, questions, anything to add? Nothing to add. No, I agree. It's it's fairly minor in nature. I just see it as a maintenance upgrade. They basically need a new catalytic converter and they're basically doing required maintenance. And the air permitting process, I can speak on that, is very arduous and detailed. Um, tough process to go through in Massachusetts. So I have faith in all the requirements they're meeting for that process as well. Danny, I'll just treat you as a somewhat subject matter expert then and ask you this. Like in the DEP review, will it go Will it go beyond sort of the safety issues? Will the DEP listen to complaints about noise or even what I think we determined in some of our previous hearings that there was some sort of dust or you know snow-like material that I think was not harmful but was still, you know, obviously not something people wanted or odor, things like that. Will the DEP take a look at those things, do you think? Um, potentially. Uh, my experience is mostly related to asphalt and concrete plants, but there are instances I've seen across New England um, Massachusetts included, where if there's enough neighbor complaints about noise, MassDP will address it, um, or at least look into it at that at that level from an industrial use with a, an air license like these folks have and are trying to amend, basically. So, I can I can talk to that. Yeah, please. On our 427 call with um, Mark Simpson and, and Courtney, um, Mark. Mentioned that. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm aware of your past past complaints about noise and dust, and he hasn't gotten any. Okay. So I, yeah, I just want to make came up in our conversation then. Yeah, I mean, not to. I, I don't want to like overgeneralize, but I think a lot of the things that were bothering some of the neighbors were not health and safety issues, which you guys made the point of, but I think are still not something that you necessarily want in your backyard. So I'm just trying to figure out how deep deep people go into that, but. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, my experience as well is that it's a pretty exhaustive process. No 
Well, that, and I believe my take on the presentation, I may have missed the part on the noise, but everything that is being proposed now is a reduction as to what's already in place. There's a reduction in fuel consumption, a reduction in emissions, and I would assume a reduction in noise if you're cutting your units in half, but I'll let the applicant yeah. clarify that. They confirmed that. It must have cut out at one point, but they've confirmed a couple times okay. that the noise will be decreased. So it's all net decreases for something that's already existing is kind of the way I see it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. All right, any other comments or questions? Public applicant, Eli, anything from the planning department? Uh, no, uh, one thing I just want to, to mention is that the landscaping plan was uh, reviewed by the building inspector and happens to be according to their from the last program. Yeah. Okay. Great. Is that question? I will take a motion. I motion to see as a minor change uh, the uh, replacement of two generative thermal oxidizers for a heat spec. All right. All right, voting uh, to determine it's a minor change. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Danny? Aye. All right. It is unanimous. Excellent. Um, I guess when we do these, we usually prepare a letter. So we'll, you'll get a, a decision determining that's a minor modification. And hopefully that'll let you go from there on with your 129 days. Very good. Thank you for your consideration. Good luck. Best Thank, of you. Luck, folks. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Eli, any other administrative matters we got to deal with? Nope. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Please, thank you. <laughs> uh, moving to adjourn, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Danny? Aye. Excellent. All right. Stop recording. Danny, don't log off just yet. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.